Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the real money multiplier with examples. This video here will talk you through the multi money multiplier in the economy when there's leakages, when there's a reduction in the money multiplier due to leakages out of the system. So we need a few terms to start off with. We define what's called the money supply in the economy, the narrow money of the, the narrow measure of money supply M as the amount of currency that's out in the system CU plus demand deposit. So deposits that you can take out your money uh, immediately from. So that is the narrow version of the money supply. We have something called a monetary base here as well, uh, denoted by B, and the monetary base is a bit broader. It has the currency that's out there in the system, the cash, plus the reserve requirements held by the banks, plus any excess reserves that banks are keeping. So there's a minimum amount dictated usually from the central bank, that might be a 10% reserve requirement, but banks can keep an additional amount over and above that reserve. This would be called an excess reserve. And finally, the money multiplier in this case here would be worked out as follows. So MM indicating the money multiplier is the money supply divided by the monetary base of which we've defined both of them up here. So what does that mean for us? Well, the money multiplier then, we can rewrite it out. Money multiplier is equal to the money supply we have defined up here as CU, the currency, and that is plus our demand deposits DD. So we know that the money supply is made up of these two items. That is all divided by the monetary base. We've also defined that up here as currency CU plus the reserve requirement up here, which is RR plus our excess reserves as well. And we're gonna put the excess reserves in as ER, so excess reserves. Now we can simplify this equation if we want. What we can do is we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by DD, by demand deposits. So if we divide the numerator and the denominator by this, what we come out with is the following. CU divided by DD, we're going to put in as a new term C, and that is currency divided by deposits. We have DD divided by itself, which comes out as one, so C plus one. And this is all divided by CU divided by DD. We've already called that small c, so we'll put it in over here. Or, or the reserve requirement divided by DD, we are going to put in as reserve requirement, so RR, small RR. And finally, ER, the excess reserves here, divided by DD, we are going to call this the excess reserve ratio. So we now have a pile of ratios in here, and we will put that in as E. So our money multiplier formula then becomes this uh, equation over here on the right hand side. So what we are going to do is take an example of what would happen here if we have actual figures in it. So the example that we are going to look at here is as follows. What we will say is we take the example in case number one. So case one up here. What we will say is C, the currency to deposit ratio is 10% in the banking system, so 0.1. We will say that the reserve requirement is 10% as well. So we'll put that in as 0.1. And we will say that the quantity of excess reserves, the excess reserve ratio, E, is zero. So we're saying here that there's no excess reserves held outside the banking system, so that's zero. In this case, our formula becomes as follows. C, small c here, the currency to deposit ratio, it's given as 0.1. So we'll put it into our formula as 0.1 plus one, so plus one up here, all divided by C, 
small c is 0.1 again, plus the reserve requirement we know is given here at 10%, so 0.1, and we know that our excess reserve requirement, our reserve ratio, is zero, so plus zero in this situation here. Now what that gives us, if we add up the numerator, we get 1.1, and if we add up the denominator here, we get 0.2. So working out these two things here, what we can see is uh, 1.1 divided by 0.2 gives us 5.5. So the multiplier in this case with a reserve requirement of 10%, a currency to deposit ratio of 10%, and no excess reserves is 5.5. So that means that one euro deposited into the banking system can potentially create 5.5 times that in terms of additional money in the economy. Now, we're going to look at a case two here. And in case two, we're gonna change our figures slightly. So in case two, what we're going to say is the currency to deposit ratio is still the same, 10% or 0.1. We will say that the reserve requirement is still the same as well. So our RR here is 10%, 0.1. The change is that we're going to say there's an excess reserve kept in the banking system of 10% or 0.1. So banks are keeping 10% extra reserves over and above the reserve requirement. Now we work out the formula again. So the formula is the currency to deposit ratio, which we know is 0.1 plus one, which we put in here, all divided by currency to deposit ratio, which is still 0.1 plus our reserve requirement, which we know is 0.1 plus our excess reserve ratio, which we now have a new figure here of 0.1. So in our newly revised formula, what we have is 1.1 all divided by 0.3, adding up the denominator. And what that gives us, if we work it out, is a figure of 3.67. So in the scenario where the banks keep extra reserves, in this case 10% extra, the money multiplier reduces from the 5.5 that we worked out above down to 3.67. So now every euro that's deposited in the banking system can potentially create new money of 3.67 times that. The importance of this is when the confidence is reduced in a banking system, for example, during the 2008 financial crisis, when banks started to increase their reserves, to increase the, the reserves of cash that they would keep in the system, as a precautionary measure, what will happen during that time is that the money multiplier potential in the economy is reduced. So any leakage, be it any of the top three up here, the currency to deposit ratio, if people are holding more money outside the system as currency, if the central bank requires banks to keep more money in reserve, or if people decide to keep more money as cash outside the system, as all of these increase, the magnitude, the size of the money multiplier decreases. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.